Hey, as why wasn't the review out for Robin Hood yesterday? Simple. I didn't want to do it. I hate this show. I hate it so much. I wanted to do something fun. I ended up playing Robocop. It was amazing. And let's face it, you don't come here for the show. You come here for what I'm going to do to the show. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my review of Robin in the Hood Season 1, or as I like to call it, the only season the show's gonna get, Episode 6, and I can't believe, but we're actually gonna go straight into St. Jesus George Lionheart Floyd Day at Sherwood and Forest. It's a day where the community comes together so some other members of the community can probably go and rob their apartments because Sherwood and Forest is probably the most unsafe place in New Nottingham and everyone is in fear for their lives when they leave their doors. Community! But it's pretty par for the course that they would celebrate the life of a violent criminal that murdered people. Director X! <laughs> So little John is just walking around the place, not having a job. We haven't seen the guy do a single minute's work in the whole bloody show. We're six episodes in. He's probably looking for some apartments to break into and steal from. So he's just a dirty, stinking, jobless bum thief. Robin comes up to him and says, How are you enjoying your first St. Jesus George Lionheart Floyd day? And he says, Oh, it's just how he'd want community coming together in peace and harmony and then robin says what that murderer the guy that murdered people but then he went i don't murder people anymore so i'm a lovely lovely guy did he do any jail time for murdering people i'm just asking for a friend the friend being my mate logic he's also the big mad because he saw robin and marion doing the scissoring at the party for um you know I just realized I really just don't know anybody's name in a show because I don't give a fuck. And Robin's big mad because she can't have a cake and eat it. Because as we saw last week, when she was snogging Marion and the people left the room, she carried on snogging her for a bit. So you're not all sweetness and delight and all things nice. You're a cookie jar whore. <laughs> So Mar <laughs> So Robin's mum comes wheeling her fat ass into the room and she says to this woman, she says, remember to put the veggie burgers on because last year the only vegan option we had was lettuce. <laughs> Then we actually have a legitimately great scene. You see, Robin approaches her mum, and her mum says to Robin, is everybody being civilized out there? And Robin says, yeah, they know the rules. And the reason why her mum's saying that is because Sherwood and Forest is full of degenerate scum, and people are worried that they might not live to see the next day. Thank you. Thank you, Director X, for making that perfectly clear. If only our savior, no, not that guy, John Prince, was here to be able to take over these blocks of flats, get rid of the scum, and actually replace it with some hardworking, upwardly mobile people that would actually add value to the area, not a body count. Oh, he's here! My savior, save us, John Prince. Save us from the scum. John Prince says to the mum, I would like to find a resolution to our problems. I'm here for peace. If you come with me, I've got a van outside. 
It's not like the vans that he used to, you know, blackened out with the word candy written on the side. But it'll take you to my building where we can have a discussion. And then Robin steps in and says, how dare you? You were the one that set the police on my mum. My mum who had committed criminal trespass in your building. My mum that incited a riot inside of your building. My mum that willingly broke the law and therefore was deserving of being prosecuted by it. How dare you? We're scum here. We take what we want. We're jobless. We're bums. And then the mum says... Why would I ever believe that you're here for compromise? Why would I ever believe that you're real? And John Prince smacks her in the face with a 10 ton bomb and says, because last week the hood kidnapped my son, which they did. Check, fooking, scissoring, mate. So John Prince says, this can't carry on, so we do need to talk, and steps forward, and little John steps in his path, and I'm thinking, little John, get out of the way, the adults are talking, you jobless bum, you're just big mad because your girlfriend wants to smash clams with another woman, and also, you don't have a job, but you wear nice new clothes and jewellery every week, where did he get the money? Oh yeah, from all the shit that you've been stealing because you're a jobless bum. Get a job, DSP. Get a job. <laughs> so it looks like they make a compromise and John Prince is actually going to go to Robin's mum's apartment to have the discussion. Robin is concerned and the mother asks why. And Robin says, because he's dangerous. This is the woman that has broken into his apartment twice, assaulted him, stolen a bunch of his shit, kidnapped his son, and she's the one that dares Look in the fucking mirror, bitch! So John Prince arrives at the apartment, the man who actually wants to improve the city from the sky. Anyway, and I'm thinking to myself, dear God, please don't let somebody kill him <laughs> in this apartment. It's Sherwood and Forrest. It could easily happen. And he has some banter with Marion because Marion went to school with his son and Marion was the bestest ever in the school. And Robin asks Marion if she can trust her. Marion, can we trust her? Marion says, yeah, of course you can trust me. Totes like, no problem, gov. So Robin's little sister, half-sister, two different dads, no stereotypes whatsoever, gov. And she's looking at the boy that she was hovering around with a few episodes ago. And she says to Robin, he's cute, isn't he? And Robin says, oh yeah, you won't hear me complaining. And she's like, gross, he's only 16. And I'm like, gross, he's only 16. Hi, is that Chris Hansen? Hi, Chris, it's Az from Heel vs. Babyface. I think I've found somebody that needs to take a seat. No, don't go near the cookie jar. Okay, yeah, love you, bye. Mwah, mwah. What? the hell is wrong with you woman i mean look at that face that's not the face of oh you wouldn't hear me complaining no that's the face of mm, you wouldn't hear me complaining no wonder the little sister's so repulsed i'm repulsed what is it with this weird attempt at sexual humor that he always tries to put in we've had fisting we've had anal sex now chris hansen's off to the fucking estate to make her take a bloody seat. Little John turns up in the nick of time before she is nicked and starts playing with his ring. No, the one that he was given by St. Jesus, George Lionheart Floyd. Always in our hearts. Thankfully, before he can embarrass himself any further, Robin says that she stole Marion's keys, which has the USB drive that she put into Prince's laptop in the previous episode. Because she is a dirty, stinking kleptomaniac that can't keep her hands to herself and thinks that she has the right to know everybody's business because she's a fucking narcissist. I'd love it if what was on the USB drive was a sex tape between Marion and Prince's son, and she was trying to recover it to keep her own business private, but now it becomes Robin's business or something. In actual fact, I'm not gonna rule that out. 
Should we put that on the maybe pile over there? So the show tries to do an absolutely pathetic gotcha on Prince. He's there, sat in the apartment, eating some home-cooked bakery. And he says to Robin's mum, did you make these? And she says, no, they were made by a woman upstairs in apartment 421. And he's like, oh, are they a baker? And she says, no, they scrub toilets in your building. As if to say, why don't you know that? He probably hires hundreds, if not thousands of people. And it's done through an HR department. He doesn't do it in the fucking vigilly. So how would he know who scrubs his bloody toilets? This doesn't make Prince look bad. This makes you look petty and pathetic. Prince is the guy who employs her who pays her money to do her job so that she can go to the supermarket and buy the ingredients so she can make this beautiful bakery goodness. So the show then defeats what it's trying to say here. Prince starts off by saying, I used to come here as a child. I used to watch with my father as they poured the concrete and made these blocks of flats. And even if you pulled away some of the wallpaper in the apartment, you might even find my crayon marks. I'm trying to do you a favor here. When the bill passes and I buy these towers in the surrounding area, everybody's going to be evicted because he wants to raise the value of the area and you're bringing it down. But I'm going to offer you the opportunity. I will go and place you in different areas around the town. I will pay for you to do that. And she says, oh, if I came to your penthouse and paid you money to leave, would you? And he says, yes, if the price was right. So she then says, oh, it's just concrete and bricks and mortar to you. Well, we here at Sherwood and Forest, we're a community. What gives you the right to scatter us? across the whole of new nottingham and i said because he would own it he would own the property and it's not yours he can then do with it as he sees fit just because you're some commie marxist socialist bullshitters doesn't mean you have any right to be there because you're a community he will own the buildings he will own the surrounding land and you can all fuckity buy. And there is nothing morally wrong with that whatsoever. Maybe, just maybe, if Sherwood and Forrest weren't a bunch of jobless scum that just go around stealing and shooting each other and dealing drugs, he wouldn't feel the necessity to step in and save the city from people like your daughter and her friends. So the direct direct self insert turns up and he bumps elbows with Kevin, Peter, Richard, David, Alan, Alan. I think it might be Alan. I can't remember. It's been a week since the last review. Also, I don't give a fuck. And the only time I've ever seen people bump elbows together was during the coof as a way not to have hand-to-hand -hand contact. And I'm just thinking, hmm. But then he says, oh, I've brought to St. Jesus George Lionheart Floyd Day a bunch of bugs, grasshoppers and shit like that for people to eat. Eat the bugs, peasants. Eat the bugs. Well, direct directs, no doubt dines on fine steak and all of that kind of stuff but the peasantry the bugs. robin comes in and gives the thumb drive to tuck and asks him to decrypt it for her and i'm just thinking there's another person involved in this now i'm really hoping that it's a sex tape little john goes on the stage to give a speech about lionheart and then guy of gisborne turns up and all I'm thinking to myself is, tits are back on the menu, boys! Hey, Director X, we can be cool with each other. Just give me a number, you know? I'll DM you on Instagram. We've got a conversation going. I'll just, just pass me her phone number. It'll be right, you know? Best show in the world next week. Robin in the Hood. Greatest show ever. Phone number, dude. Just the phone number.
Once again, the inverted commas villains proved to be way more interesting and charismatic than any of this fucking white bread shit here. And <laughs> little John goes full Will Smith as Guy of Gisborne mentions Lionheart's name. You keep Lionheart's name out of your fucking mouth! And then his missus with the big titty bags says to Robin, I got some concealer that... <laughs> I got some concealer that you can use to fix your face. I laughed. I laughed. I love these two. I do. I love these two characters. What? No, not these two characters. They're shite. I mean, Guy and his missus, of course. So Robin <laughs> stops little John from getting into an altercation with Guy. And she's like, stop it. It's, Lion <laughs> it's Lionheart Day. Anyone is welcome here. And little John who's a terrible actor, by the way, says, you must be joking. And then Robin replies with, I've got John Prince in my front room right now. And I'm just like, holy shit, are you going to fuck him as well? <laughs> Is he picking out one of the selection of condoms from the cookie jar? Um, let's go with ribbed for her pleasure. So we go back to the apartment and Prince comments that these apartments are three times the size of modern day apartments. They were designed to be luxury apartments from his dad. And she replies with, why? Are we not good enough for it? And he says, I didn't say that. It's okay, Prince John. I will. Yes, you aren't worth it because it looks like you're a bunch of fucking welfare wannabes that are getting these flats and doing fucking no work. So the mayor, who's now joined the negotiations to act as a go-between for these two parties, she says, look, if the bill passes, you're all going to be evicted anyway. There's nothing that can be done about that. And Robin's mum replies with, well, if we are evicted, then the people, the councillors who voted against us will have the worst re-election campaign ever. Why? You're just two blocks of flats and a bunch of scum. I doubt half of you in that fucking buildings could write an X on the ballot sheet. Never mind your bloody names. One thing that you probably are good at, though, is going down welfare and cashing a fucking check. A check, by the way, which has been put together with money from all the other hardworking people around the area to prop bums like you up. Commie shit. I believe in you, Prince John. I believe in you. He's the hero we deserve. Never mind need. We deserve this hero. So the mayor says to Robin's mum, this is one of the most underserved areas of New Nottingham. And because of that, without the support of investment from John Prince, you're always going to be last to the trough. John Prince obviously agrees with the mayor and says it's just an unfortunate predicament of circumstance. To which Robin's mum turns to John Prince and says, is that what you want? To own us? Just when you think the show couldn't get any more race baity than it already is, by the way. Director X sticks his head firmly up his rectum and sniffs every single piece of fecal matter up there and says, I'm amazing. And also, he doesn't want to own them. He wants them to fuck off. Just like I do. So Marion decides to weigh in and say, well, we, if we need some trust here, what are you going to do about the charges against Robin's mum? You defame people, you bully them and all this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. She trespassed, criminally trespassed on his property. She had no right to do so. She broke the law. If she had done it outside, there'd be no problem. But she didn't. She came into private property and she trespassed. That was her problem. It's not Prince's fault that he actually wants to prosecute her to the letter of the law. It's her fault for being a fucking criminal, just like everyone else in these scum two towers. So after a useless scene with Much and Tuck, we get back to the negotiation table, and now they've got the sheriff on hands free. And Marion is saying to the sheriff, we want the charges dropped, and also, we want an apology. What, for you breaking the law? To which the sheriff, of course, goes, 
Fuck out of here. So the mayor then asserts her authority over the chief of the police and says, get it done. So the chief police says, I'll put it under review then, mayor. So it's okay for them to go under the benefits of corruptive government as opposed to when maybe John Prince, who actually wants to bring value to the area, does the same. I thought turnabout is fair play, but you just want rules for me and not for thee. The hypocrisy of it. So once again, the show shows us eh, the hypocrisy of Robin and her band of scum. She goes into her mother's apartment and says to Marion, sorry, I'll rephrase that, demands to Marion that she speak to her now. Marion correctly says, I'm in the middle of a meeting, can it wait? To which Robin shows Marion her keys, which she stole from her, which has the thumb drive on. So Marion excuses herself and goes to speak to Robin in the corridor. So Robin then shows a photograph that she stole from the thumb drive of Prince, Prince's son, and Marion when they were younger on holiday together. She also tells Marion, we see a consistent amount of payments going from Prince to you. What is going on? Not that you're entitled to find out, but there you go. Anyway, Marion says, this is not what you think. Prince killed my dad. He didn't, as we'll discover in a moment, but go with me on this. Her father used to be Prince's business partner, but then he discovered some files about Sherwood and Forrest which made him big scared. Why? Was Prince looking to clean up the area of crime and scum? Who knows? Anyway, when Prince found out, he had Marion's father fired. Not only that, he used his influence to get him disbarred as a lawyer and essentially cast out from society. He couldn't get a job, the money started to dry up, the family turned to drink, and her father popped himself. A decision he made. Prince didn't pull any triggers there. He could have gone down different avenues. He chose that one. One could argue that he took a selfish and cowardly route out instead of actually relocating with his family or trying something different. But it looks like he just wanted the life that he was previously accustomed to. Anyway, after this explanation, Robin says, "Will you lied to us, so go fuck yourself and walks off. You know, the bitch that's currently lying to Marion about being a member of the hood. You know, the bitch which stole Marion's keys with the thumb drive because she felt entitled to find out what Marion was doing. You know, the bitch. No, I've got nothing more to add. She's just a bitch. So this causes Marion to leave. And Robin goes back into the apartment and says, Marion's gone. You can postpone this meeting that I fucked up due to my own selfishness. And they said, no, the vote's on Monday. We've got to get this sorted out right now. So Amon goes, get back to Lionheart Day and piss off. Which in all fairness, fair play to her mum. She's a very inconsistent character, but sometimes she actually gets it right. So then the mum turns to John Prince after he's told her, look, I've had the charges dropped. Can we please take this seriously now? And she says, what if there is a way for you to do your development, but we also get to keep our homes? And John Prince says, I'm listening. Because John Prince is a very reasonable man and has been from the get-go. He's just been villainized for no real reason. He's been operating within the law. These people, yeah, I said these people, have not. Robin then goes back to Lionheart Day where she gets confronted by her sister and she says, have you got a problem? She's like, yeah, ever since mum's come back from hospital, me, a 16-year-old, I think she is, girl, has been looking after her mum, doing everything for her mum, while you have been swanning off doing God knows what. I'll tell you what she's been doing. Stealing! because she's a dirty, stinky thief. Hi, I'm up here now. Guy has been brought into the police station because he was packing heat at the Lionheart Festival. And the, <laughs> the sheriff, once again, shows more restraint than any of the people are in the hood. And she says, I don't need victims. I need monsters, which they are. 
So all Guy has to really do is draw that out of them. She also steps on his balls because she's kind of into that sort of thing. Guy, not so much. Alan does an interview with the local press about Lionheart Day, where we discover that Lionheart was actually a gang leader. That would make sense, you know, due to the fact we know he killed people. Oh, by the way, that's not Alan. That's a lovely little girl having her face painted. She's got way more personality than Alan had. <laughs> little John decides to spill his guts about how he feels about Robin and their kiss. Robin looks at him and says, don't you realize I'm just a massive whore? <laughs> And then Alan bursts in and says, oh no, Guy of Gisborne has taken over the stage and is doing stuff which is spooking people. <laughs> so Guy's on stage, getting get everyone big mad. Then him and his missus start singing. She's doing some booty dropping. I'm, I'm there for it. I'm there for all of it. Robin and a posse come storming up. And then they see a guy in the crowd with a pair of boots on and they go, he's a cop. So they, <laughs> they turn around and go in the other direction, realizing a setup to get them into trouble. And then the press are like, oh my God, there's a man on the stage singing. Guy and his missus are hilarious. Guy's chewing the scenery. He's got a ton of personality. I don't want to come on his missus tits. So the compromise that Robin's mum wants is that he puts in a bunch of new facilities, then builds the condos next door, so all the scum in Sherwood and Forest can just literally nip next door to steal all their shit. Needless to say, John Prince not particularly happy with that offer. Prince then has a think and says, you and I, we're never going to be friends, are we? And I think that's a pity. But I do think we have a deal to which Robin's mum is pretty much just as shocked as I am. I really hope he's going to fuck her over because she's a cow. So Tuck creeps behind the tech and pulls out a cable which cuts the microphone from Guy and then the hood go on stage with their $5 Canadian, which is about 10p, cosplay outfits. The show is sponsored by Axe, sponsored possibly by Dell as well. Why does it look so cheap and tacky? How is it that I can actually put on a better effort of a helmet than any of the people in the bloody show? And even when I do this... It's still covering my face and giving me that anonymity. It didn't take much. It took a fucking order on Amazon. Wait, I've got something special for you. <laughs> then Guy's busty missus pulls out another cable which stops the hood from talking, singing, vomiting on stage then guy gets up and starts to cause some discontent which gets little john big mad but the police step in oh my goodness me this is just what they wanted riot police just turn up out of nowhere they must have been hanging around the back in the ice cream store or something and by ice cream store i obviously mean local crack house and they start hitting their shields and the crowd are running and screaming and sirens are everywhere, and it cuts back to Robin's mum apartment, where Prince John says, well, it looked like we'd done a compromise deal. However, this is Sherwood, and I can't do business like this. Fuckity bye. And in all fairness, all it took was one ajoutant to cause all of this shit, which makes Prince John... 100% right. This place is a lit fuse that goes off at any and all given opportunities. As ever, the pieces of crap blame everybody but themselves. Even though they bring all of this on themselves, they have to look to Prince to blame him. They ditch the hood costumes with her little sister who knows that she's actually in the hood and she hides in one of the ducks, air ducks, with a bag of clothes. However, they leave the bow on the table out in the open. The undercover cop finds it, and the police chief realizes 
that the hood didn't get away. They are part of the crowd which has been arrested for disturbing the peace or something or other. So it's just a matter of finding who they actually are as she looks directly at Robin in the police cart. But, you know, whatever. The music is foreboding and the camera then pans to little John. No idea why. And that's the end of this episode. Once again, the show shows, God damn it, Leroy, that it's actually Prince John who's in the right in the vast majority of the circumstance. This place is nothing but a crime-ridden haven and they're looking for any excuse to start any old shit. If what Guy did wound everybody up so easily, then what hope do they ever stand of doing anything other then cramming the police up their arsehole until eventually Sherwood and Forrest will give them up. I just want guys and misses with the big knockers to keep coming back. That's all I care about. I'll see you on the next episode. You take care. Bye for now.